let's move on to the other trial, right. combining uh, immunotherapy um, uh, to chemotherapy, using right. the ECOG 4599 backbone, carboplatin, right. paclitaxel, bevacizumab, uh, and adding a TEZO to that regimen right. in a three-arm trial, a uh, large study, phase three, 1,200 patients. Haas, you want to walk us down sure. kind of the design? And so very interesting chemo backbone, right? Carbotaxel, bevacizumab, and personally, I can't remember when the last time was that I gave that regimen to a non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer, but it is definitely used, and I think there's market data to suggest that the combination is being used. Um, but interesting design, as you said, so arm one uh, or arm A was um, ECOG 4599, carbotaxel plus, uh, you know, bevacizumab. One arm was that. One arm was uh, the quadruple combination now, as opposed to triple. And the other arm was just carbotaxel plus um, tazolizumab without having the bevacizumab added. So the presentation uh, by Dr. Rek at ESMO uh, Immune Oncology meeting at 2017 concentrated on only two arms of the study. That was was the quadruple arm, so carbo, paclitaxel, bev, and atezo, versus carbotaxel and uh, bevacizumab. The other arm that is chemo plus atezo, we don't have the full uh, data set, so we have to wait for that. As you said, 1,200 patients, regardless of the level of pd one expression, um, co-primary endpoint in 10 to treat patient population, and a new biomarker was introduced, this uh, uh, T effector gene signature. That's a combination of uh, pd one um, interferon gamma signature, and another protein CXCL5. And the idea here was that perhaps the T effector signature would be a better biomarker. Um, Mind you that we don't have the full publication. We're going based on a 15-minute abstract presentation, so there's a lot that still is not answered, but um, the overall data clearly shows that the quadruple combination has a better PFS uh, compared to the triple combination, uh, and so the question then is, is this now a new standard of care potentially for patients? And I think the details of the study are very, very interesting and in multiple tables that were presented. For instance, regardless of the level level of pd one expression, we seem to have a benefit for the PFS. Yeah. Again, as we've seen kind of consistently throughout the history of pd one development, higher level of expression definitely correlates with better clinical efficacy. I don't think anybody can argue that pd one can predict, if you have high levels, that you get better clinical efficacy out of it. But in this subgroup analysis, even patients who were TC0, tumor cell zero, and immune cell zero, still seem to benefit, although the hazard ratio was a little bit less. So that's one uh, T effector signature didn't seem to pan out as much as far as I'm concerned. Be curious to see what the panel thinks. It wasn't any more predictive or less predictive than the level of pd one expression. So I don't think that's adding anything. But I think the biggest question here for us is, are we going to start using a quadruple combination? Right. Now, the toxicity, as you would expect, was a little bit more with the quadruple combination, although immune-related adverse events were not significantly worse, so that was not a major issue here. You get the typical side effects from the bevacizumab and taxol combination uh, that you might not otherwise have if you didn't use that particular backbone, but again, another interesting study that to me suggests that there is something to this chemotherapy. You can also look at the data and say, well, this really is a positive study suggesting that VEGF inhibition can augment right. immune uh, modulation. And we have a lot of preclinical data on we that. We do, definitely. So, this one, though, is a little bit of a mix until we get the uh, other arm of the study evaluated and we have the data right. without bevacizumab to see if chemo plus atezo alone gives us um, better yeah. clinical efficacy or not. And, uh, I, we may be forced to do cross-trial comparisons, and I'll just throw this out to the, the group. If we see, I mean, this trial also showed a trend towards overall survival mm -hmm. as well, 19.2 months in the quadruple arm, mm -hmm. um, coupled with a biological rationale of anti-angiogenesis with immunotherapy and all the things we know about that, at least preclinically. If we see a numerically higher OS in mm -hmm. this trial than we see with 189, and again, this is playing a game, yeah. um, would we be compelled to use the quadruplet therapy over a triplet therapy if the median overall survival in Empower is 19 to 20 and it is in Keynote 189, only 15 or 16? Not I think that we're going to see that, but 
can we do this, compare apples to oranges? Mm -hmm. I think that's really a problematic kind of a comparison. Uh, different patient populations, uh, even though we think that pdl ones uh, when we do the pd one expression, every, all the tests are very similar, you're still having variability in the different, different testing platforms and all of that. So I think it's gonna be a little bit difficult to do cross-trial comparisons like that and say one quadruple is superior to triple right. because you have a couple of months improvement in survival in one arm versus the other. I don't think I'll go there. I think, to me, if, the, if both studies are that positive, it just says you now have an option. Right. You can use that or not, but I'll be curious to see what Roy thinks about the combination of IO plus VEGF, because I think recently this has been one of your focus. I mean, you had yeah. a presentation with the, such a combination. Well, without chemotherapy, yeah. there's a suggestion that ramucirumab and anti-VEGF are two antibody right. plus uh, pembrolizumab um, looks uh, reasonably interesting. That was only in a single arm trial. Sure. It needs to be validated in a randomized setting that's being designed right now. But clearly the preclinical data would suggest that anti-angiogenic agents do have an effect on the tumor microenvironment, on antigen presentation, on Tregs, and so forth. So there's a lot of, this makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. That said, I don't know how we're gonna make any sense of it comparing the two trials. What we might get is from the both, it might make us feel more comfortable as a group here saying that a chemotherapy combination makes sense. Maybe adding in the bevacizumab makes sense, but we're not gonna be able to say much about the two. Um, but, but I think with this trial now, with the, uh, the keynote trials, I think there's no doubt that we're gonna be adding these agents to chemotherapy in the future in certain patients, and uh, looking forward to learning more about VEGF. Sure, there. Yeah, I mean, in terms of cross-study comparisons, what people are doing, though, is saying, uh, you know, the PFS for single-agent Pembro and pd one positive disease is 10 months. And then they look at the chemo combinations and they go, well, it's a little bit better, but I'm not sure it's so much better that I would displace pembrolizumab as my first line treatment of choice in pd one positive disease. So I don't know about the others. To me, I think we need a lot more information around the chemotherapy combinations to make any conclusive statements. To me, I think that for pd one positive disease, single agent Pembro is still uh, the standard of care. Yeah. I think you make a good point. So I spent some time this last weekend with doctors who treat melanoma. And listening to them, you know, they're not thinking in one or two years, they're thinking at three, four, five years. Mm. So one thing we also have to be cautious about is, are we in, is it the short-term PFS or is it the long-term survival? Sure. And how are we affecting that by adding in some of these combinations and the effect on the immune system? So there's really still a lot that we don't know. But I agree with you, Naya, that is one way to look at it, you know, compare the PFSs. I think people are going to look at the toxicity of the two chemotherapy platforms and probably make some decisions based on the tolerability and their perceptions of that. I, and, uh, I think that's and, going to be important. And yeah. the, other, the other piece is, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit obsessed with complete response rates and <laughs> with single agent Pembro and pd one positive disease, the CR rate was almost 10%. Mm -hmm. It was much higher than any of the chemo trials that I've seen so far. And uh, to me, I mean, I think that there may be some you know, some additive benefit with the two together, but is there real synergy? We're also trying to define more abbreviated courses of chemotherapy where we're maybe getting sort of maximal antigen release without the myelosuppression, right. and there's a number right. of trials looking at two cycles of chemotherapy. Sure. So I don't think we've necessarily found the sweet spot of how to combine chemotherapy with IO. Yeah, I absolutely agree.